Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about purchase orders and how you can go about making them inside EasyOffice. First off, you, know, you need to go to your settings, add-ons and enable the purchase order module from over here. Once you've enabled the purchase orders module, you have the option of allowing staff users to create purchase order requests for staff administrators to review and replenish stock, or you can also make payments at the time of receiving items. These are two complementary settings that you can basically decide if you want to enable or not. So once the purchase orders have been made, you'd want to go about setting them up. Now, there are a number of options that we can do related to purchase orders. A, you can go about making custom fields for these purchase orders as well. All you need to do is go to the custom fields module from over here, select purchase orders as the primary module against which you want to make the custom field, and then just add the data in it when you're making the purchase order. You also have the option of customizing the printout templates against these purchase orders. So when you go and print the invoice out, you have a template that is very specific to your own organization. Now we'll go about and discuss how to add items inside a purchase order. And there are a number of ways to do that. And your access privileges to the system, which means basically if you're an administrator or a staff user, also determines how you get to go about adding items inside a purchase order. Now, if you've, let's say for instance, you're an administrator inside the system, you will have the option of adding items in mass as well. And when I say in mass, I basically mean that you can go ahead, select the items that you need, click on the actions button over here, and then add to a purchase order. You then, you can then basically decide that if this is going to be added to an existing purchase order or to a new purchase order. Let's go ahead and click new purchase order for now. Then you will get to define a vendor from over here. And then all you need to do is click on create. Now we did this for assets over here, but a similar process can be seen for inventory and asset stock as well. You can just select the items that you need, go to the actions button and add them to a purchase order. For inventory and asset stock, there's also an option to request stock. So I'll go ahead and open up this inventory item over here. And from the more button, I'll basically go and request stock. When I request stock, I can add it to again, an existing purchase order or to a new purchase order. All I need to do is specify the delivery location, the quantity that I'm looking for, and the vendor for the purchase order. All of the stock requests that you make will be shown in this tab over here. So now that we've talked about adding items inside a purchase order, we'll go ahead and take a look at one of the purchase orders inside the system as well. So purchase orders go through a number of different states. If I click on the purchase filter option over here, you can filter purchase order based on their state as well. A purchase order that has just been made but not been confirmed it stays in a draft state, which basically means that you can go ahead and add items, remove items, or take any kinds of actions. Then, if you have a request workflow and you've sent a request to an administrator to accept and they haven't, then your purchase order will be in the approval pending tab, which you can see from over here, or just scroll over to over here as well. Then, approval requests that are actually not approved, which essentially means they were denied, will be shown in this filter. And then, once you've confirmed the purchase order, there are two states over here. You can either confirm a purchase order, make the payment against it, and it'll be in the confirmed items pending state. If you've confirmed the purchase order and have received the items but have still not paid for it, it's going to be in the payment pending state. And if you've taken all of the actions, you've received the items, you've confirmed uh, receival of the items, and you've confirmed the payment as well, the purchase order is then completed and it's reached the end of its life cycle. Apart from this, if you haven't, if you make a purchase order or you made a purchase order in the past and you've decided that this is not something that you're going to be using, you can always go ahead and mark a purchase order as void. So the system does not uh, regard it as an active purchase order or take into consideration any of the data that is in it. So for now, we're going to go ahead and use purchase order number 14 as an example. So when I open up this purchase order, you can see that there are a number of different details over here. Purchase, order to purchase orders can also have an identification number. You can basically then specify the delivery location, the location to where the items are going to be delivered. When the items are going to be delivered, then you can see who requested the purchase order, who was the approver, if it is a approval-based workflow, which we will cover in our next video. Then you can define payment terms. Then you have your shipment terms as well. Then you have the description and PO notes field. So the descriptions are basically shown before all of the line items in the purchase order and the PO notes are shown after the line items in the purchase order. And then this is the custom field for contact info that I made over here. Now you can see that all of my, all of the items that are, that I added are listed over here. Against each item, I have the option of specifying a delivery location as well. So the purchase order as a whole can have one delivery location, but if any of the line items need to be delivered to another location that is specific to just that item, you can basically go ahead, click on the edit button over here, 
specify the delivery location. The delivery location that you specify over here will take precedence over the delivery location that we marked in the start for the whole purchase order. The view for these columns over here can also be customized by just clicking on the pen icon. You can select which columns you want to add, which columns you want to remove. Now just scrolling back up, you can see that the way we added items basically in, uh, included going to the items listing page, selecting a number of items and then just adding them in mass. Now there's also an option to just add items directly from over here. You can search either by the item name, number or identification number. For staff users, they also have the option of adding, uh, they have the option of adding items that are not in the product catalog. Administrators also have the option of adding these items, but the administrators also have the option of adding items in mass or items that already exist inside the database. So let's say I'm a staff user and I need to add items that are not in the product catalog. I just click on this button over here. I can basically just go about uh, adding an item. I specify the name, ID, what is the type of item that I'm adding, then the group, quantity, and price per unit. If I've made any kind of custom fields against these items, they will also be shown over here. Then scrolling down, you have the option of attaching files and comments as well. So if, for example, you want to use EasyOffice as your primary system for end-to-end -end asset management, then you would be using the purchase order module as well. But there is a probability that you might just be using another software for the purchase orders. So if you have a physical copy or any kind of other attachments that you need to attach to this purchase order, you can just go ahead, click on attach file and add a file or an image over here. Purchase orders can, are also a kind of thing that can involve collaboration from the inventory, finance, or the department that is going to receive the items. So to encourage that notion, we've added the comments module over here. So all of the users that are going to be involved in this purchase order can just simply come over here, add a comment to track progress as well. So now that we've talked about what the purchase order details page looks like and what kind of things you can attach to it, we now explore the buttons over here at the top. Like I mentioned, we'll be covering the request flow in another video. But for now, let's say you've entered each and everything that you had to inside the purchase order, and now all you need to do is confirm it. So I'll go ahead, click on confirm order. The system lets me know that, hey, once you confirm the purchase order, you will not be able to allow, you will not be allowed to come back and make any changes to it. We click on OK, and you will see that the status over here gets updated to, from draft to confirmed items pending. Now, although we've confirmed this order, there is still an option to revert this back to draft. So there is a lot of flexibility over here. So when I click on revert to draft, you will immediately see that this purchase order goes back to the draft state over here. We look at some of the actions that are included in the more button over here. So when I click on this, I have the option of making custom entry. So let's say you need to go ahead and record shipment charges. So all you need to do is click up, make, make a field for shipment charges, specify how much is the amount, add any kind of comments, and you'll be good to go. Similar to this, you can also basically define what kind of tax rates you want to apply. For now, I've applied the GST, which you can always go ahead and set up one of the taxes over here, apply a task, apply, apply the tax, or just create a new tax by specifying a name, a tax rate, and how do you want to apply it. There's also, so since there is a complete vendor management module inside the system, there's also an option to communicate with these vendors from within the purchase order. All you need to do is click on send email, select the vendor that you want to communicate with, copy any extra users, for example, the finance department of the vendor or for, the, or for your own organization, define a subject and add any kind of email body along with what kind of attachments or links you want to insert. Now let's go ahead and confirm the purchase order again. And now let's look at the two different kind of actions we can take. We can either receive items against this purchase order or make a payment. So for now, I'll just go ahead and receive the items over here. So I have all of the items that are listed uh, that I want to receive listed over here. I'm also going to select update the product catalog with the items received, which basically means that these items will be automatically added to our active items list. Any kind of receiving notes I want to add. I have a payable amount listed over here, how much payment I need to make, what is gonna be my mode of payment, and then what is the payment date. So let's just say I'm going to go ahead and select check as the mode of payment and I'm going to click on save. So now when I was receiving the items, I made the payment alongside, which basically ends the life cycle for this purchase order and it moves to the completed state. From my more button, I can also go ahead and look at the history associated for this work order. So if I click on the purchase order history, it will basically give me an overview of when and I, uh, when the purchase order was created, what, what are all of the state changes that it went through and who, took, who actually administered those actions and on what date. I can also go ahead 
and basically look at the payment history or the receivables history. I click on the payments history and I can basically see what is the me payment method, the amount, who took the action. And we see a similar thing for the receivables history over here as well. From the purchase order page, you can see all of the items that are associated to it. And there's also an events log for easy access that basically lets you know all of the changes that happened to the purchase order. So this was a bit on purchase order. In our next video, we're going to talk about how to make purchase requests inside the system and how you can go about approving or denying them. Thank you.